In this video, we want to talk about the idea of continuity. So the first question you might ask is, what is continuity? And intuitively, you might think about this as a function that can be drawn without picking up your pencil. So let's look at this example. The question is whether or not this function is continuous. Well, it's a function f of x equals 1 over x. And we know that it has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So if I attempted to draw this function, I would certainly have to pick up my pencil. And therefore, this function is not continuous. Here's another function. We looked at this earlier. The function f of x is equal to the absolute value of x over x. We know that as we choose positive values, this function looks like y equals 1. And as we choose negative values, this function looks like y equals minus 1. So if I wanted to draw this function, I would certainly have to pick up my pencil because it has no functional value at x equals 0. So this function, again, would also be discontinuous. Here's another function. It has to be a trigonometric function. f of x is equal to sine x. I'm looking at it on the interval from minus 3 to 3. Notice I can draw that curve very nicely without picking up my pencil. So we say this function is continuous based upon our intuitive definition. But now we need a mathematical definition that will really hold up under all circumstances. So we say a function is continuous at c if the limit at c equals a functional value at c. And so we write that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to f of c. So these are those special functions that we talked about when we first looked at limits. Remember we made a big deal about saying that we don't care about what the function is doing at the limit point. But for some of our problems we saw that the limit of a function was exactly the functional value. And so for these functions we say those functions are continuous at that limit point C. Let's look at an example. From before we looked at the limit as x approach 1 of 3x squared plus 2, and we saw that to be equal to 5. Notice that in this problem we really see that the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x does equal f of 1. And so by our definition, this function is continuous at the point x equals 1. Let's consider another function. Our function f of x equals absolute value of x over x again. Again, we know that this function is 1 when x is greater than 0 and negative 1 when x is less than 0, and it has no value when x is equal to 0. So the limit as x approaches 0 of the absolute value of x over x is certainly not equal to f of 0, because we know that 0 is not in the domain of our function f of x. And so we say x equals 0 is a point of discontinuity. So if we have a point where the function is not continuous, that point is called a point of discontinuity. So what if we wanted to consider whether or not a function was continuous on an interval? Well, it would mean that the function f is continuous on the interval a, b, if it is continuous at every point on that interval. Consider again our function sine x. Notice that for any value x equals c, the limit as x approaches c will be equal to the functional value f of c. And intuitively we understand that because there are no breaks in the graph. So we could draw these series of lines for any value c. So this function is continuous on the entire interval from minus 3 to 3. Is this function continuous at x equals 2? And the function is f of x equals x minus 1. So let's consider this example. We know we have to check our definition. So first we'll take the limit as x goes to 2 of x minus 1. We plug in 2 and we get 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. And we see that the limit as x goes to 2 of x minus 1 does equal f of 2 because f of 2 is 1. If we look at the graph, what we see is that f of 2 is 1 and that function is continuous at the point. Let's consider this next example. Is a function f of x equals x squared minus 9 over x plus 3 continuous at the point x equals minus 3? Again, we're going to apply the definition of continuity. So we need to check the limit as x goes to minus 3 of x squared minus 9 over x plus 3. 
we're going to factor and simplify the numerator factors to x plus 3 times x minus 3. And so the x plus 3 and the numerator and denominator cancel, leaving us with the limit as x goes to minus 3 of x minus 3. Now if we plug in the minus 3, we see that's equal to minus 6, which is certainly not equal to f of minus 3. Because again, this function is not defined at minus 3. Minus 3 is not even in the domain of the function, so certainly that's not equal to the limit. And so if we look at the function, we see there's a hole at x equals minus 3, and this function has a discontinuity at x equals minus 3. Now what can I expect? So here are some of the what of can I expect properties. Well, one is that the... if my function is add or track, subtract two functions so together, finally, I should we'll say, look at some of the then what I can expect the sum or difference of those two continuous functions should be we'll continuous. Look at the sum or if I multiply two continuous, continuous functions, functions together, then their product should be continuous So if we have two continuous functions and we add or subtract and if I divide them, the quotient, we would expect that the sum or f difference of x would also g of x should be continuous, provided that I do not have points in my interval where g of x is equal to zero. The product of two continuous functions is continuous So the big picture that we want to take away from this is that a function should also be continuous at a point C if the limit at C is equal to the functional value at C. And finally, the quotient and that's what we have here mathematically that's written the limit as x approaches C of f of x is equal to f of C. Provided that the function in the denominator is not equal to zero for any of the values in that interval. So finally, we want to make sure we understand that a function is continuous at a point C if the limit at C is equal to f of C. And mathematically, we write that as a limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to f of c. So again, a function is continuous at a point c if the limit as x approaches c of that function is equal to the functional value at c.